Let's look at C-sharp's implicitly typed arrays feature. It was introduced in C-sharp 3.0. It looks like a convenience feature, which it is, but it actually has far more meaning than that. I believe I've shown this to you, actually. Int array my ints. I'm going to say new int array, and then I can put some ints out here. Not very fascinating, but sequence of ints. This I could do in C Sharp 1.0 when C Sharp first came out. I build, it succeeds. In C Sharp 3.0, I can actually eliminate the type name and build, and it still succeeds. And it looks like all I gained there was taking the type off, which, which I did. All, right, all I have to say is new array, give me an array, and you figure out the details here. But this actually came into the language to support anonymous types. And this may be jumping ahead a little bit in the C Sharp videos, but we can have anonymous types where I say var my instance and I can say new curlies here and we'll just say first name gets Jamie last name gets King and the compiler essentially looks at this type you can see I don't have a type name here I'm just instantiating a type and the compiler will generate a type for me and give it properties first name last name not very intense I hope that's not too far advanced I can make more instances of these I can say your instance and your first name will be awesome and your last name will be viewer and since the property names match on both of these anonymous types then these anonymous types will be of the same type they will be identical well what if I wanted to make an array of these things with the old syntax I could say var my array gets new and then what do I have to put here I'd say new int array before but now what type name do I put here I don't have a type name to state. So with implicitly typed arrays, I can say, well, just give me an array with my instance, your instance, and compiler, whatever type name you chose here, the compiler actually has to choose a type name and put that type name in the MSIL, the IL level. The compiler will fake a name, make a name, and we're essentially telling the compiler, you know what, look at the arguments here and you decide what the best type name would be to put right here because I can't say the type name the type name's not accessible to me and so the compiler agrees I can control shift B and we still build and the compiler fills in the details that's nice and that's implicitly typed arrays in a nutshell now let me just show you some gotchas with these things that caught me off guard when I was first working with these I'm saying new array and all these values out here are actually ints these are int literals when I type a number like this, and the numbers within the range of an int. And the compiler says, okay, the type of these numbers are ints, so I will fill this in to be an int. The compiler does not look at the left hand side here. When the compiler is doing its inference of what this array should be, it only looks at the right hand side. The actual expression, the fact that I'm assigning the result to something else, is completely unrelated. In fact, I can even stress that by saying var here, compiler, you figure out what the type here should be on the left by looking on the right and by the way you also need to figure out the type on the right because I'm going to take int out of here and so the compiler will look at all these and say oh well int is a good choice here int okay now watch what happens if I say 3.0 here control shift B build it builds still succeeds but now it's an array of doubles okay I can actually stress that by saying console right line my ints dot get type Control F5, and it's a double array. It's really not my ints anymore. It's a double array. Why did the compiler choose double? Well, 3.0 cannot be converted to an integer implicitly. In fact, I can even stress this more. That's 3.1415927. There we go. The beginnings of pi. If the compiler said this is going to be an int array, then we'd lose this information. But the compiler says, you know, a 4 and a 5, all these integers out here are implicitly convertible to double. So I'm going to make this a double array because everything can fit inside of the double array. Now what happens if I go in here and say, well, let's do the letter G, and I try to build this, build still succeeded. What type did the compiler choose to convert to in this case? Turn, pause the video, come back, think of it. Control F5, and it's an int array because characters are implicitly convertible to int. Let's try another example. I'm going to say my array. Let's get rid of all these primitive values out of here. And we'll say get type right there. And then I'm going to say class base and class derived one. 
one hair from base and control L control V V drive two will also inherit from base I'm going to say new derived one when I build this what will the data type be and hopefully it's pretty obvious we have a derived one in here the compiler will say well it's an array of derived ones let's make a derived one array and certainly it does derived one array but if I come in here and say oh new derived two what type of the compiler choose to define the type of my implicitly typed array. I have a derived one here, I have a derived two here. You would think, well, they both inherit from base, so base would be a good choice here, but I'm getting the red squiggly saying, no best type found for implicitly typed array. And if I build, I get the exact same error. No best type found for implicitly typed array. When the compiler is implicitly typing an array, the compiler will only consider types within the list. Right? Derived 1 is not convertible to derived 2, nor is derived 2 convertible to derived 1. So the compiler's like, I don't know what type you want me to go to here, so I'm going to throw an error instead. If I want the compiler to consider base as a convertible type, I have to throw base in this list somewhere. So new base, and control shift B, it now builds, and the type of the array is base array. Because derived 1 is convertible to base, obviously base is convertible to base, and derived 2 is convertible to base. Now this also works with conversion operators. Let's do class cow and let's throw a cow in here. New cow and now we have the problem. Uh, all these, these types here will convert to a base but cow is just kind of hanging out saying huh, I'm here. I don't really convert to any of you. I know I'm not really any part of you and so we get the exact same error. I can't find the best type for my implicitly typed array and I could inherit from base but let's do a conversion operator if you I know I'm kind of jumping the gun this is a little bit early in the .NET videos but, but essentially I'm going to overload an operator to convert a cow to something else you can go watch my operator overloading videos if you like to catch up on this public static operator uh, let's convert a cow to a derived one that doesn't make sense but most of the stuff I'm doing in this video does not make sense. And I'm just going to return null here. So this is a method that the compiler sees. Oh, oh, and I need implicit here. Implicit. The compiler looks at this and says, well, if I have a cow and I need to convert it to a derived one, I will call this static method. I'll pass the cow in here, and it's up to the method to come up with the proper logic to convert this cow to a derived one. Well, obviously this isn't very good logic. I'm just returning null, but the compiler's happy because it has a function to convert a cow to, derived, to a derived one. Notice the, notice the red squiggly's gone. I can build. Build succeeded because derived one converts to a base. Derived two converts to a base. Base converts to a base. Cow converts to a derived one, which then the compiler can reference convert up to a base or upcast to a base. So, whew, that's kind of weird. Watch, actually. I'll F10 on this, get the debugger going. I'll put a little breakpoint here. You can see that execution passes through here in order to convert my cow to a derived one, to convert to a base. And the array type is base array. So there you go. That's implicitly typed arrays. Probably way more than you wanted to know about implicitly typed arrays. Generally, I just say new bracket bracket because it's easy. Uh, I, I don't like to think about the type if I don't have to. If you ever work in a dynamic language, generally you just kind of forget about the types and you move forward and get work done. And then if you do something stupid, then you'll find the error at runtime.